So in this video we're looking at energy and mass and Einstein's famous equation which you know of E equals mc squared. We're going to look at exactly what that means uh, and then um, just yeah the second point where the energy comes from is kind of related to that. Um, you can see the energy comes from the mass and we'll just talk about that a little bit and then we'll look at some specific examples fusion and fission um, we're not going to look at it in a great deal of detail, suitable for year 11 uh, and year 12. Actually, I'm not sure if it appears in year 11, but definitely for year 12 physics in New Zealand. So let's get on with it. Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, what does it tell us? It tells us that energy, energy, which is E, and mass are equivalent uh, things. <laughs> They're equivalent anyway. So um, you might hear a physicist talking about mass energy conservation or um, a mass energy system. Um, what this means is that, uh, and this is getting into the where the energy comes from, uh, in a nuclear bomb blast, some of the mass is converted to energy. And the energy typically uh, is noticeable in terms of heat and rapid expansion of gases and things like that. Um, and because energy is a quantity in itself, we can't really hold a certain amount of energy in our hand because energy is kind of measured by the amount of uh, either a movement in a kinetic sense or potential energy, perhaps gravitational or elastic potential or something like that, electrical potential, um, the charge separation, things like that. Energy in itself we can't kind of get a, a handle on, but mass we can, which is nice. But within that mass there's a certain amount of, uh, if you like, potential energy, mass potential energy to do stuff. So uh, looking at this idea of fusion and fission, um, we want to we wanna just explore what's going on here. So let's just do this, move it out of the way a little bit. Um, and here's an example of, a very rough example, of uh, of fusion. You have this and you have this and they join together to produce one whole which is larger. Okay, so the, the, the mass of the two has combined. We might call this M1 and M2 to produce a new mass M3. But in this case with fusion those masses do not equal. So if you added the masses, they don't equal. And, and the difference is, that difference in mass is um, proportional to the amount of energy that's been released. So uh, that gives us a measure of what the energy uh, being released is. Now fusion, um, overall we would find that this mass here is less. So M3 is less than M1 plus M2. Okay, so there's less mass, but the difference is the conservation. Uh, if we wanted to change this to an equal sign, the energy plus the mass 3 would make this equal. Okay, so that's where the equality thing comes from. Um, now, fission, splitting apart, is the same thing. Um, except splitting apart obviously. So you have one larger one, which in this case is our M1, and then that, for whatever reason, because it's unstable, radioactive or anything like that, splits apart into two smaller masses, M2 and M3. So in this case, M1 is greater, that's my greater than in a bad way, greater than M2 and M3 um, because of the missing energy which has been released. So uh, we would make this equal if we added the energy. Okay, so that, that's, that's fission. Think of it like a fissure or a crack is splitting up and the one above um, up here was fusion. Fusion where they're fusing together. The on is replaced with an E and it's fusion. Fission is like a fissure or a crack and splitting. They could have 
called them different names, joining and splitting, and it might have been a little bit easier. But fission and fusion sounds kind of cool. Uh, anyway, now, um, this missing mass, which was related to the amount of energy released, um, is, uh, is related to the mass um, by the proportionality constant. So instead of being E is proportional to M, it's related by a proportionality constant uh, C squared. So we found to make this an equals, a proper equation, you have to multiply the mass, that change in mass, sometimes we see it as a triangle because the change in mass, you multiply that by C squared. C is the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is very, very fast and it's a very, very high number. You can tell by that uh, 10 to the power of 8, which is 10, 1 with 8 zeros after it. So it's 3 with 8 zeros after it. And you're squaring that. So it's 9 with 16 zeros after it times by the mass change to get the energy. So a very, very, very small mass will give rise to a very, very large energy change. And that's what this is all about. So if you had to work out um, how much energy was released, um, whether it's fusion or fission, all you'd do is add up um, the two sides separately. You would um, take the masses away from each other to find the change in the mass. Then you would multiply that by the speed of light squared. And that will give you the amount of energy in joules. Remember, it's SI units, so joules. J is the symbol for joules. And the mass should be in kilograms, again, as the SI unit. And the speed of light, C, in meters per second. So there it is. That's what it is. It sounds quite uh, amazing, really, that this mass and energy are the same thing. Um, and that they appear to, um, you know, the energy appears to come from nowhere. But when you look really carefully, small amount of mass change, uh, either increasing or, uh, no, small amount of mass change. It's always a decrease in mass, otherwise it wouldn't be energy released. There you go, that's how to remember. And that's Einstein's uh, famous equation.